the man from Mars in the Mark of the Dragon. <laughs> lightning, power, beautiful lightning. <laughs> I knew the lightning would bring you, Professor. Run. Come here. You have seen the beautiful storm, Professor. Lightning, great sheets of lightning to work the dynamo. <laughs> Perhaps we get enough power for transmission, eh? <laughs> Haven't I been waiting months for a storm like this? Call Albert. Prepare the transmitter. Hurry. Hurry. Good. <laughs> Good. Perhaps we'll be lucky tonight, Professor. Listen. <laughs> By the sound of it, yes. I'll go. While you're gone, I'll speak with my daughter. Very good, Professor. Very good. <laughs> Sato! Sato! Ugh, where is that chap? Curing place? Sato, lock my daughter's apartment from the main corridor and return the key to me. Lock apartment? Why, please? Mrs. Santy would not like, yes? Do as you're told. I'll explain to my daughter when she comes. Then you do not lock that door, too? After I've spoken to Sandy. Honorable Professor is experimenting again? What do you know about my experiment, Sato? Please, Sato know nothing. I hope not, Sato. I would kill to keep my experiment secret. Sato understand, Honorable Motive. I go and bring key. Professor! Everything is ready. <laughs> I'm coming, Franz. Go back to the laboratory and wait. <laughs> Father, what's happening? Why is everyone so secretive? Sandy, how many times have I told you not to ask so many questions? Please, I'm entitled to know. Everywhere I go in this house, I, I see strange people. No one's friendly. Even you... That is enough, Sandy. Secrecy is essential. The magnitude of my work here demands it. You're entitled to know only what I tell you. But, Father, oh, don't you see? I can't be happy. There's that awful Japanese Sato and, and Franz and, and Elbert. All women are susceptible to atmosphere, my dear. There is, I admit, certain danger every time I use my auto-distributing transmitter. Danger? But, Father, what does all this mean? I don't care to explain, Sandy. Sato has locked your apartment from the corridor. Kindly return through this other door. I'll lock it after you. No, I, I don't want to be left alone. I'm afraid it, it's something in this house. Sandy, do as you're told. Yes, Father. I may be busy for some time in the laboratory. I'll unlock your door as soon as I'm finished. And now for the tower and the transmitter. Perhaps we will be lucky tonight. Ready, Franz? Mm. Are you prepared, Albert? Everything is ready, Professor. Good. Franz, to your post. Yes! <laughs> yes! Sometimes, Albert, I wish that laughing monster out of the way. Mm. But Franz is useful. He's so strong, obedient, and faithful. Yes, yes. To your post, Albert. Mm. At once, Professor. Ready? Open the roof. Listen, the storm is passing. Yes, Albert. But it's lasted long enough for us to use the power we've stored. Wait, I'll read the meter. Ah, one million volts. Mm. We have stored enough electric force from this storm to last us six months. If we succeed tonight. Into the lead sheath cabin, both of you. We are going to use the transmitter tonight, eh? <laughs> Do you think I'm raising this tower for amusement? Turn on number, number four motor. Albert, stand beside me. 
Franz, get into the control cage. Ready, Professor. <laughs> Ready. Good. Take us up. And proceed, Professor? Yes, Albert. We begin at number one panel. Switch on number five motor. Voltage? Increase in waves of 20. Cut in motor number six. The range dials are working well, Professor. We record perfect far reflection of a distance of one million miles. <laughs> that is not enough. We want power, Franz. Power. But attempting to establish contact with... Albert, switch on number two panel. Yes, Professor. France, take another reading of our range. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Full power circulating through the transmitter, Professor. Good. Come here, Albert. You are, you are going to try for contact now? Yes. Tonight is the test, Albert. If I succeed... I shall possess a power beyond the wildest dreams of modern imagination. Is that you, Father? Who's there? Please to be quiet. Sato, what do you want? Quiet, peace. That look on your face, your eyes. What are you doing? Turning out the light, Miss. No. Darkness hide many things. Get out of here, Sato. Get out. Turn on that light at once. Now you come, please. How did you get in here? My father has the only key to my apartment. He has one. Sato has other. Honorable Father, forget the other key in the excitement to try experiment. You come, please. Don't be ridiculous. I... Please, though, as told, or Honorable Father will die. You can't hurt him. My father... Lady does not understand. Sato, little man. Big man, all of this. Big man can kill Honorable Father. You come. Keep away from me. You come at me at once, You, you come at me now. Let come me go. Come at me. Come at me. Come Come at What happened? It's Sato. Sato. What was he doing here? He tried to kill me. He went this way. There he is, running down the corridor. You little oriental devil. I'll stop you. <laughs> What's going on in there? Albert, this way. Come along, Sandy. Is he? Yeah. He's dead. Sato. I killed him, Albert. Now, Sandy, what happened? Sato came to my room. He insisted that I go with him. Go? Where? I don't know. He said he had orders from someone. He, he called a big man. Professor, look. Look at this tattoo on Satu's arm. See it? The mark of the dragon. What does this tattoo mean? Why are you both... So Sandy, be quiet. Well, Albert, there is no doubt about this mark, Professor. Satu was one of the dragon men. This tattoo proves it. I thought you were imagining things when you told me that you suspected him. In future, anyone who attempts to enter Stone Bank will meet the same fate. Father, who are the dragon men? Why all this mystery? Uh, Miss Kirkland, uh, said to belong to an organization... That is enough, which... Albert. Sandy, you may come with us to the tower. Oh, please, I, I feel I want to rest. I... We have no time to argue. This incident has interrupted our experiment. Albert, escort my daughter. I must know tonight. I must know about my transmitter. What is all this equipment for, Father? It looks like a huge steel and glass cylinder poked out above the roof. Sandy, it would take a year and a whole book of blueprints to explain. Please watch. Don't interrupt my work. Both panels are turned on, Professor. France, control the volume. Yes. 
<laughs> now, Albert, take your position with the stratospheric wheel. Ready? Ready. What are you doing now, Father? In a second or two, you will hear a sound. Turn two degrees from the magnetic reading, Albert. More. More. There it is, Professor. It is the note. The note, Albert. Father. Not now, Sandy. Albert, if we can establish that sound in one continuous reception, we have succeeded. Turn half a degree. More. More. Now. It must be now or we failed. The sound has stopped. No, 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 it mustn't. It mustn't. Franz, Franz, you ugly useless fool. More volume. More. That's it. <laughs> That's it, Albert. That's it. Listen, Sandy. Listen. I hear it, Father. But what possible significance could such a sound have? What significance? Sandy, after millions of years, man has made contact with the planet Mars. And I, I have done it. Is Professor Kirkland insane? Has his apparatus really established contact with Mars? To what purpose did Sato, the Japanese, lose his life? Listen for another thrilling episode of The Man from Mars at the same time tomorrow night. Man from Mars in the Mock of the Dragon. <laughs> Professor Kirkland, a brilliant scientist leading a retired life in his lonely house, hidden in the midst of the swampy Florida Everglades, claims to have established contact with the planet Mars. Living with him is his daughter Sandy and two assistants, the subhuman Franz and Albert. There was also a Japanese named Sato, but Professor Kirkland shot Sato because of an attack the Japanese made upon Sandy. On examining the body, Kirkland made the startling discovery that on Sato's arm was tattooed the mark of the dragon. It is the following night. The moon is down. Darkness saturates the tangled, weird world of the Everglades. White and gray smudge this darkness. The steamy, stagnant white of scum-covered swamp water. The gray of thick, creeping fog hugging the sour earth. Overall hovers an atmosphere of eeriness. Through the swirling gray fingers of fog, obtrudes the suggestion of shape, of man-made walls of wrought cold stone, of stark tall chimneys, of a rambling bleak house embowled in this ghost-like panorama of nature. Then the fog swirls, the steam throws a sheet of vapor over all, and when vision is lost, sound arrives, awful sound. The hungry beast voices its warning against intrusion. But it goes unheeded. For into this scene of airiness come the footsteps of a man wading through the slimy pools. The feet stop. The fog swirls on. There is vision, bleak, cold vision. The man hesitates as one might do who senses danger. There is his danger, the great shaggy form of a hound tracking him. But there is something else too, something he doesn't hear till it is too late.
Step in, Mike. Take a chair and a cigar. If you don't mind, Mr. Simpson, I'll take an explanation. Perhaps I can guess. McGurry didn't get his story. You might be psychic. Do I need to be psychic when the topic of conversation is Professor Kirkland? All right, I'll admit I sent McGully down to the Everglades to see the professor. And McGully was shot, correct? Uh, have you been checking on the hospitals? Listen, Mr. Simpson. You don't want newspaper reporters on this assignment. You want robots. Robots with armor plate a foot thick and a Tommy gun in each hand. Answer my question, Mike. I don't rule owe my orders. How did you know McGully went to investigate Professor Kirkland? I knew he had a ticket on the 2.30. And I saw him make his will. Stop clowning. Why don't you stop wasting reporters? Every man who's tried to get a story down at Stone Bank has come back carrying a bullet. Gridley, it's my job to print news. All over this country, people are talking about the lunatic of Stone Bank. Well, isn't Kirkland a lunatic? As far as I'm concerned, Stone Bank's a good name for that rock-built dungeon Professor Kirkland calls home. You know, I wonder what he does down there anyway. <laughs> you see, you're getting curious, too. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't want to know why people consider Kirkland a lunatic. It's only fair to warn you that Kirkland's within the law taking a shot at anyone who trespasses on his property. Why tell me? I'm not interested. You're going to be, Mike. Are you trying to tell me... You're assigned to the Kirkland case. Now, you'll listen to me, Simpson. But, Mike, I've got my orders. I've got to pass them on to you. Keep them. I'm not giving any crazy professor a chance to put a bullet in my hide. Mr. Gridley, might I remind you that two weeks ago this paper bailed you out of a certain jail to the tune of five... I don't need to be reminded. I'm paying the money back out of my salary. Out of salary. Time payment isn't good enough. Take this assignment or you're fired. Make up your mind now. Sir, listen, this is blackmail. It's an order. Anyway, you're the toughest reporter on the paper. Think of the headlines. The truth about the Stone Bank professor. Mike Gridley goes behind the scenes. In a hearse. Well, I suppose I'll have to tell the desk you're off the payroll. Now, now wait a minute. Yeah, those, uh, those headlines uh, would look kind of pretty. Your name would look pretty under them. Yeah, it would be a good story. Now you're talking, Mike. I made a reservation on the 510 train for you and Lispy. I thought Lispy could take some pictures. Well, it's nice to know someone's going to be there to hold my hand when I die. <laughs> Five ten, eh? That means we'll get to Stone Bank about midnight. Yeah, it's a nice time to start prowling. Good luck, Mike. Good funeral, you mean. Now, why, if I live? Stone Bank and a mad professor. Why don't we write to Ripley? Oh, just cough, Mike. Don't. Well, you can't get past night yet. Okay. But if you have to cough again, sneak it out. Or can suck me Adam's apple. Let's be. Just keep that gun handy and both eyes wide open. The nearer we get to that house, the more intense the feeling that we'll be a couple of dead men within the hour. Uh, stop being atmospheric, Mike. It ain't right for me noise. I've got sensibilities, remember? My feet are just killing me. Why can't we go up the drive like decent folk instead of wading through this miniature Atlantic Ocean? Because we'd probably be shot down before he went a yard. Haven't you heard that Professor Kirkton shoots on sight? I've heard he's got a daughter. Boy, that's something. What's that? A hound. A hungry hound. Yeah, that's what I thought. But ain't Pluto howling for a bone. <sighs> Dark, ain't it? Let's move again. If I can get my feet out of this mud. Come to Stone Bank for a retread. Come on, Lisby. Mike, do you think I could just fall down and just ooze away? We're safe enough at the moment, Lisby. But as soon as we reach dry ground, keep that gun ready. <sighs> dry land. Boy, do I feel like Columbus. There's our mark. A balcony in front of the house. Listen, Mike. Suppose we get into the house without feeding the dogs. What then? We make a search. That's against the law. There isn't any law down here. Not even against Moira? No. Let's go back. Simpson wants a story. He'll get it. Look out, Lispy. It's one of the dogs. The brute's coming this way. Down. Down nothing. Here goes. Go. 
Sorry, you fool. That shot will give the alarm over the house. Maybe you prefer a Daniel act with the dog. Yeah, what did I tell you? See, lights, there and there. Look, they're coming out of the house. Let's take cover. Yes, let's be in the house. Oh, look, Mike. What's the good of a job, money, if you're a stiff? Shut up and run. The house is the last place they'd expect to find us. This is our big chance to get inside. Come on, keep on the grass border. No reception committee this end anyway. Whoever opened that door is prowling in the garden. While he's busy, we're going inside. Another ten yards. Mike! Mike, the ground's doing a rumba. Look out, Lispy. It's opening like a tap door. Fall and through. Lispy, it's opening like a tap door. Fall and through. I feel like a bone in a lion's cage. Must be. Mike. Mike, where are you? Same place as you. Oh, boy. You must have gone out like a light when... Wait a minute. That opening in the path. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like an earthquake. It wasn't. Okay, brains trust. What was it? It's a clever trap. Rigged so that anyone who stood on it fell through into... Into where? Where are we? In a Jules Boyne menagerie. Hold your nerves together while I get my cigarette lighter working. I'll take a look around. Gee, it works. Why don't you write to Ripley? Say, where are we? Look at it, will you? A deep pit with a mechanical trap at the top. Well, now we know Professor Kirkland's crazy. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Must be. Have you got the gun? I dropped it, Mike. I remember letting it go when I fell. <laughs> There's an entrance here somewhere. That voice is level, not above us. Let's find a way out and keep running. Don't move, Lisby. We're in trouble. Penalty or laugh make you can see us. How? I can't see. Hey! Hey, look down this end. A doorway. Five bucks, it's locked. Well, we'll soon see. Mike, Mike, I'm getting scared. Where is that guy? Come out, shut devil. Come out and show yourself. There he is. He's looking at us through the grill in the door. Let us out of here. <laughs> He's mad. I've never seen a face like his before. It's hideous. He's coming in here. Let's speak. Can't you remember where you dropped that gun? It's here somewhere. Or... Back. Back against the wall. What for? We're not taking this without a fight. Here he comes. What's that he's holding over his head? It's a huge glass jar. A jar of asses. <laughs> a jar I will hold over you. A jar of acid to burn you to pieces where you stand. No, no, don't. Look out his hand. No, no, don't. Look out his hand. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Have the two newsmen been saturated with the deadly acid? And who is the madman who conceived such a fate for them? Perhaps Professor Kirkland really has contacted the planet Mars. For why else would he go to such fiendish lengths to preserve his secret? Don't miss the next thrilling episode of The Man from Mars at the same time tomorrow night. Music